Let's create a scenario. Your friend invites you to a swanky restaurant downtown for lunch. Since you have absolutely nothing planned for the day, you decide to take an Uber and make your way downtown. After some time, you reach the establishment and realizing that your friend is paying for all of the guests, you go overboard, ordering and treating yourself to 8 maple syrup covered pancakes, a schnitzel plater, 2 chicken chimichangas, 3 servings of chocolate souffle, a pot of biryani, and a whole key lime pie. But wait, there is more! As you decide to wash it all down by chugging 2 cups of guava juice, 3 cups of chai, 5 bottles of coca cola, and an entire carton of eggnog. By the time you finish eating and drinking, your friend gives you the dirtiest look. But before you can leave the scene and prevent things from getting awkward, a wave of drowsiness hits you hard. Your limbs and eyelids get real heavy. You start to lose focus, and soon you are fast asleep on the tabletop. You, you just, just got, got hit, hit by, by a food coma. At this point, you may be wondering, what exactly is this so-called food coma, and what causes it? Officially known as postprandial somnolence by the medical world, a food coma is simply the sleepy state of being people tend to feel after a hearty meal. And while the phenomena is quite common, the machinations of it are all still quite mysterious. But since we are discussing what we do know about food coma, let's start with the primary reason, eating heavily. When you first start biting and swallowing your food, your stomach starts to produce a hormone called gastrin, which aids in secreting gastric acids to digest the food. As the food reaches the small intestine, the hormone enterogastrone is secreted from the duodenum, the first part of your small intestine. This hormone is where it all starts, as the enterogastrone redirects the blood flow in your body towards your digestive tract during the process of digestion. This causes the blood to circulate away from your other body parts such as the limbs and some from the brain, which then causes those parts to ease up and relax. And as the limbs and brain loosen up, so do you, to the point where you drift off into a slumber. And since a larger meal will require more gastrin and enterogastrone, the more you eat during the meal, the more likely you are to be hit by a food coma. However, before you come to the conclusion that heavy eating is the only way to be affected by postprandial somnolence, realize that the very food you eat is also a very major contributing factor. You may have heard before that the amino acid tryptophan is notorious for making people fall asleep. And while it is true that tryptophan does aid in creating sleep inducing serotonin, there is actually no known food item with enough tryptophan concentrate for the amino acid to be efficient. There are, however, pharmaceuticals which use tryptophan to help people hit the sack. As for actual food ingredients, however, sugar is a major food coma inducer. Of course, you may have heard before that sugar is supposed to make people, especially young children, more hyperactive. Nevertheless, this is simply a myth for most people, and sugar highs are simply an example of the placebo effect. You see, neuropeptides are protein-like molecules used by your brain's neurons for the purpose of communication. And one significant neuropeptide is orexin. Orexin controls many factors for your mind and body, such as hunger, emotions, and most importantly for the subject of food coma, wakefulness. You can learn more about orexin in my previous video about sleep. But now, let's get back to sugar. When you consume a sizable amount of sugar during a meal or sitting, the orexin secretion in your brain is hindered. This would inhibit the feeling of wakefulness in your body, leaving you tired and lethargic. At the same time, eating sugar tells your pancreas to release insulin, which can also make you tired by letting the higher concentration of the previously mentioned tryptophan into your brain. In addition to sugar, consuming a high level of carbohydrates can also contribute to a sleepy state of being, as carbs give you rapid short-term energy that quickly crashes, urging you to indulge in nap time. After all, carbohydrates consist of sugars themselves. Fruits with high levels of potassium and magnesium, such as figs and bananas, 
help relax your muscles. While serotonin-rich food items, such as dark chocolate, relaxes your brain. Saturated fats, which are generally bad for you, are also major sleep inducers. And of course, given that you are of legal age and live in the areas in which they are legalized, depressant drugs such as alcohol and cannabis can also make you fall asleep. So far in this video, we covered the two main reasons as to why people tend to fall asleep after eating. Nevertheless, due to knowledge from creating my past video on sleep, I say that there is a third reason which is less considered when it comes to the origins of food coma. This is none other than your body's natural alarm system. The circadian rhythms. To understand what I mean, let's take a look at this graph. As you can see, from midnight to around 10 am, your body's urge to sleep slopes down. While from 8 pm to 11 pm, it increases almost exponentially. But what's happening here? You can clearly see that around 2 pm, there is a sudden peak in the urge to sleep. Known as the afternoon slump, this happens due to how our circadian rhythms were designed to begin with. Naturally, the body starts to feel fatigued around 7 to 8 hours after waking up. And as a result, your body temperature slightly decreases during that time. This signals your brain to secrete the sleep-inducing chemical melatonin to tell your body, Hey, it's 2.30 in the afternoon, time to get some sleep. Since many people eat lunch at around this time, we could partially blame our own body's alarm systems for food comas. As of conclusion, food comas are caused primarily by eating a heavy quantity of food, as the blood in your body is diverted to your stomach from other body parts, leaving you tired. Some food items, such as sugars or carbohydrates, have special properties that help you sleep faster. And lastly, the time at which you eat your meal is also a possible factor due to how our circadian rhythms are established. So the next time you feel like taking a nap after eating, this, this video, video is something, is something to, think to think about. Think about.